Kairuzilzen halor ban penklan yiki kendon kam megalia luka yukta ak balawanra doba adilbat nongrum nongthawan ke Voice of the People Party VPP na noat celong lak kentait lemba ke Voice Board haka si basan ke dorbar mang tengka jong ke yeng dorbar thawan ke jela haka arpu arterik pempang arjaran sao. Hasua kan ia bawaan ra ia ke resolution ubah adil bat luang ba ars ngi mencua ke yeng dor bar ula dep keren ba ke jingma ke bakraw ia ke sensiar kadar bat ke sensiar pai ba hi kadei ke bam sab bat ke nie ke tema ke penlong ia kinong syong syong ban pai kemat sya ke megalia luka yukta. Uluang bulan raya ke megalia luka yukta amanun bel arjar arpusaw henri la ketak no da ke yeng dor bar. Uluang ba ke megalia luka yukta amemen ak arjar arpuwey kamya ha bat ke rukom terikam ke luka yukta ha ke jela dak basya tang uwe ubri uru ban terikam kum ke luka yukta. The resolution read like this. The house do now resolve to recommend that the provision of megalia luka yukta ak be amended to us to strength, strengthen the institution of Loka Yuta in the state and effectively deal with cases of corruption by public functionaries. Mr. Speaker, sir, just uh, two days ago in this very house, I have made my voice heard that the biggest threat to governance and to democracy is corruption. And that here in the state of Maikalia, the battle against corruption has made people look to the only institution that has given us a ray of hope and that institution is the Maikalia Luka Yukta. And so, I had moved a private member's bill to protect and strengthen the institution of Luka Yuta in the state by making specific amendment to the existing Mekhalia Luka Yuta Act for giving it more teeth and more effectiveness that, is, that it deserves. The amendment bill that I move as a private member contain amendment clauses to react the essential provision of the Lokpal and Loka Yukta Act that were originally there in the principle and enactment of Meikhalia Loka Yukta Act in 2014, but were deleted and submitted by the Amendment Act of 2021. We all know that when leave to introduce the Meikhalia Loka Yukta Amendment Bill 2024, in this August House was put to vote. The nose had it, and motion to introduce the bill was not carried. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to point out that not all members said no to the amendment bill. Anyone who has watched, who had watched the proceeding of the motion, to introduce the private member's bill, will notice that there were quite a number of voices who had shouted, yes. In support of the amendment bill to protect and strengthen the institution of Lokayuta in the state. Therefore, it is my understanding that in this resolution that I am moving today, I should not speak much because I already had a chance two days ago in the house <clears throat> to say what needed to be said. But the honorable members who voiced support for the Loka Yukta Amendment Bill 2024 did not get the opportunity that day. And so I shall slow, so, so I shall allow more time for these honorable members to get adequate space to express the support for the need to amend the weak provision of Mekha Loka Yuta Act so as to protect and strengthen the institution of Loka Yuta in the state. From my side, I have said 
that amendment to the Local Utah Act done in 2021 has diluted the effective functioning of Local Utah in the state by allowing the option of a single member body of just the chairperson alone and without the mandatory appointment of judicial members in what is a statutory a judicial body. The Amendment Act of 2021 has practically weakened the role of the Loka Yukta in the state. Let us now look forward to hear what others, honorable members of the House, have to say on this very important subject, which the people of the state are also very anxious to know. With these few words, I once again move a resolution on the rules 115 that the House do now resolve to recommend that the provision of Mekhila Lokayuta Act be amended as, a strengthen, as to strengthen the institution of Lokayuta in the state and effectively deal with cases of corruption by public functionaries. Nakaliang Mutrang Ba, but Jubab, Lapan Shai, but Lapan Bait Tamaya, Megalia, Loka Yuta, Arjaka Sao, but Lasha, but Uwe Ubrio, Nihadu Sangut, Lasha, Bantrekam, Kumka Loka Yuta. For moving this uh, resolution in this August House on the matter, this House do now resolve to recommend that the provisions of the Megalia Loka Yukta Act be amended so as to strengthen the institution of Loka Yukta in the state and effectively deal with cases of corruption by public functionaries. So the Meghalaya Lokayukta is an institution established under the Meghalaya Lokayukta Act 2014 and mandated to inquire into allegations of corruption against certain public functionaries and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. The amendment of Meghalaya Lokayukta Act in the year 2021 was carried out by the government to make Lokayukta functional in the state of Meghalaya. The Lokayukta under the Meghalaya Lokayukta Act 2014, in absence of amendment carried out in 2021, was not even functional, as the unamended Meghalaya Lokayukta Act required minimum of chairman and four members, out of which 50% shall be judiciary. Even single vacancy, either to the post of chairman, chairperson, or member, would have made Lokayukta dysfunctional. The amendment of the Lokayukta Act 2014 that was passed by this August House in 2021 amended Section 3 by replacing the word and with or. So the word quote and unquote with the word, quote, or, unquote, in Clause A of subsection 2. This amendment achieved the statutory purpose of making Lokayukta functional. Mr. Speaker, sir, the amendment in 2021, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, the amendment in, Le in amendment in 2021 was carried out so as to fill the lacuna in the Meghalaya Lokayukta Act 2014 as the definition of Lokayukta as provided in Section 3.2 contemplated that Lokayukta can function and discharge the duties only when Lokayukta consists of chairman and four members. These amendments were very much needed as there was a challenge to the decision passed by earlier chairman Lokayukta, I, that is Justice P. K. Musahari retired judge of Guwahati High Court in the High Court of Meghalaya in writ petition number 421-2020. At that time, only the chairman of the Lokayukta had been appointed. The division bench of the Honorable High Court of Meghalaya, wide order dated 16-2-2021, sought the response of the state government stating that on a plain reading of Section 3 of the Meghalaya Lokayukta Act 2014, 
and observed, and I quote from the order of the Honorable High Court, which stated that, quote, simply by appointing a retired judge to be the chairperson of the Meghalaya Lokayukta is not enough to be considered as a fully constituted and functional body in view of the plain language of the Section 3 of Meghalaya Lokayukta Act 2014, unquote. Hence, in other words, in order to constitute Lokayukta as per unamended provision of the Meghalaya Lokayukta Act 2014, at all times, there has to be a chairman and four members, out of whom 50% shall be judiciary members. The government examined Lokayukta Act of other states and found that in other states like Sikkim, Haryana, Jharkhand, Himachal Pradesh, Tripura, etc., Lokayukta is a single member body. The amendment was carried out in the year 2021 to make Lokayukta functional. And in order to give flexibility, the word and was replaced with the word or. The amended provision was placed before the division bench of the Honorable High Court of Meghalaya that was hearing the case and the amendment was noticed by the Honorable High Court and held that the Meghalaya Lokayukta has become functional. The Honorable High Court in the order stated that, and I quote, the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly has passed the Meghalaya Lokayukta Amendment Act 2021, suitably amending certain provisions of the Meghalaya Lokayukta Act 2014. Considering the contents of the amendment and substitution that have now been brought into force, it cannot be held that Meghalaya Lokayukta is non-functional at this stage." Unquote. So the Meghalaya Lokayukta is fully functional with the current chairperson who assumed office on 1st of February 2022. Further, the secretary of the Lokayukta, who is in the rank of a secretary to the government of Meghalaya, has been appointed as the chairperson on the recommendation of the state government as per section 10.2 of the Act. Further, the inquiry wing of the Meghalaya Lokayukta has also been constituted under section 11 of the Act, which is headed by a di director of inquiry who is not below the rank of additional secretary to the state government. The director of prosecution has also been appointed. The officers of the inquiry wing have also been constituted and it may be stated that under the Act, all these appointments are made by the chairperson of the Lokayukta based on the panel of names sent, by the Lokayukta, sent to the Lokayukta by the state government. So the total number of complaints, cases registered with the Lokayukta till date is 38, of which 27 cases have been closed, including those charge sheeted. 11 cases are pending with investigation, and this shows that Lokayukta is functioning as per the mandate of the Act and once again wish to clarify that the amendment made in 2021 were made to strengthen the very functioning of the, Loka, of the Lokayukta. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, it may be mentioned that all the institutions wings created under the Meghalaya Lokayukta Act 2014 as amended from time to time are in place and adequately staffed to handle all complaint cases filed in the Meghalaya Lokayukta so far. In the event of numbers of cases increases subsequently, suitable provisions are available, are already available in the Act for strengthening the Lokayukta to deal with such emerging situation. Further, the chairperson under Section 28.1 of the Act has the power to utilize the services of any officer or organization or investigation agency of the state government. Sir, I trust this clarification satisfies the Honorable Member and this August House, and I request the Honorable Member to withdraw the resolution. Hadian can use some wood, Lampanka ying, Ulabu, Yakamat, Hakamat Kaying, Banrai, Nakajimam Tre, or Badilbad, Banwing, a resolution below one rap. Deputy Her Speaker, sir, I stand on my strong spirit of understanding that amendment of this Lokayuta 2021 uh, is totally diluted the uh, full composition of Lokayukta. So therefore, I will not withdraw.
Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, Deputy Speaker, sir, if I may just uh, summarize what I just read out, I think the Honorable Member has not uh, understood the entire uh, uh, context of what I was trying to say. So the only amendment we made was in the word and and or, which technically means, sir, that the Lokayukta today, in the earlier bill, unless and until all five members are appointed, whether there is a case or whether there is, a, there is no case, if five, unless five people are appointed, the Lokayukta cannot function. Now what we made amendment is that even if there is one chairperson is appointed, even then the Lokayukta can function. It does not mean that there cannot be five members. It says or, which means it can function with one member also, two members also, three members, four members, or five members. So therefore, it is a flexible option that has been given, which will make it easy for the government to ensure that Lokoyukta is functional at any given time. For example, sir, suppose the term of a particular member goes, you know, is, term, is, is over. And for some reason, we are now at four members and not five. Based on the old act, the Lokoyukta will stop functioning. It cannot function. But now with this provision, even with four members, it can continue till we appoint the fifth member. So it's a, it's a very, very logical and a practical way to ensure that Lokayukta functions at any given time. This is precisely strengthening the Lokayukta Act so that at no given time does a Lokayukta not function. So therefore, uh, I, I fail to understand why this uh, issue is. As I said, it does not stop us from appointing more. If the Honourable Member says that, well, we should appoint more members, that's a valid point. We can discuss on that. But the question of not going ahead with this amendment is actually going very much against his purpose and the purpose for which the Lokayukta has been created. Because as of now, as I said, if you don't appoint all the members, sorry, with the 2014 Bill Act, sorry, we would not be able to function. And that time only the Chairman was there. So therefore, there are many factors like costs and the areas are there. As I said, like if appointing five members and suppose there are no cases. So all these factors have to be looked into when we moved ahead. So we have given flexibility to the bill, uh, to the act, by simply giving the option that a Lokayukta can function with one member, two members, three members, four or full five member. In the earlier act, only five full bench could function. And that's the reason why the Lokayukta, even after the chairman was appointed, the Lokayukta was actually declared as non-functional. So that is what the basic point is, sir. I, I can't explain it any further. But uh, again, I request the Honourable Member to withdraw the resolution, sir. Now, I repeat again, whether the mover of the resolution would like to withdraw his resolution or not. <coughs> so as I have uh, said, uh, when we come to a court of law, a single word it may interpret to one sentence or to two sentences or to three sentences. Therefore, I still stand by my side, by my principle, that the words and means definite. The words or means option. Therefore, I stand by my principle. I will not withdraw.